Welcome to the Prop Shop, I am Eric. Today I'm going to show you how I made the ironclad version of the classic Star Wars vehicle, the Blockade Runner. Let's get in there. It's a little under six inches long, so I really had to pack it full of detail so that it would read like it's much larger than it is. So without further ado, let's get into it. I knew I wanted to maintain the aesthetic I established with my ironclad version of the Millennium Falcon, primarily the mix of iron and wood that made these ships so distinguishable. I began with sketches to figure out the basic shapes and structures I wanted to include. I decided not to spend too much time on the back, as I didn't know what I would use for the smokestacks. I was fine to figure out those details during construction. From there, I quickly created an outline of the ship using folded paper. I wanted this thing to be small, so around 6 inches seemed just large enough to get the details I desired. I traced the template onto foam core, cut it out with an X-Acto blade, and sanded the edges smooth. I found the tiniest strips of balsa wood I could find in the architectural section of a Blick art store. I cut them into lengths of around an inch, uh, took a small group at a time, and sanded the edges. Here I'm testing the layout before gluing. Uh, I used Elmer's glue for the balsa. Here you can see me spreading the glue and starting the process. I worked small sections at a time since the thin layers of glue dried pretty quickly. I let each section dry before taking an old pair of scissors to the overhanging strips. After trimming, I sanded the edges to make them flush with the foam core. I repeated this process till the entire base was finished. I then sanded the top so the surface would be smooth and even. Next, I began working on the cannon housing in the middle of the ship. I found this great cardboard at my morning job that has tiny corrugations. I cut out the shapes as well as the openings for the cannons and doors. I used scissors to bevel the inner sides, that way the pieces would fit together at the proper angle. I then quickly glued the pieces together, just simply using hot glue. Hot glue should really only be used for areas that can be hidden and where you can get away with a little bit of a mess. Next I added a roof with some cardstock, glued it first, then trimmed it with the X-Acto blade, cleaned it up with the scissors. Next I used a cap from a nip that I had used on a previous shoot. I traced it and cut a section of the cardstock so I could glue it into the cannon housing. I then took some Rust-Oleum primer in a flat gray and spray painted the piece. This tied the various shapes together nicely. I created everything separate from the model base as I didn't want to have to mask off the balsa wood. Next came the forward section that mimicked the front of the Tanti 4. I created templates with printer paper, then I cut final pieces out of that same cardstock. I once again used hot glue for this piece. I know it would probably be the fastest way to connect the pieces. I attached the sides and spray painted it to match the other section. I also made some shapes out of that same cardstock that would act as metal plating for some of the structures to sit on. Now on to the back of the ship. I grabbed some various small pieces in the plumbing section of my local Ace Hardware. I took a fine tooth saw and cut off the small end sections. I then used a Dremel to sand off the bottom half of these pieces. I cleaned them up with fine grit sandpaper. I was not sure how they would be arranged at this point. Next came the funnels or smokestacks. I wanted this section to be over the top visually since the blockade runner had those giant rockets. I took these connector pieces I also got at Ace and cut them in half, sanded them, and gave them, along with those other pieces, a coat of gray primer. I sanded a small angle in the bottom of each piece so that they would sit at a slight angle on the deck. I used super glue for this specific job. Here you can see the ship really starting to take shape. You can also see that I carved plank details into the top of the cannon housing to match the deck. I primed it and painted it to mimic the color of the balsa wood. Now it's time to make the paddle wheels. I took an empty Gutterman thread spool, cut the end off using my Dremel, cleaned it up with sandpaper before cutting it in half with a disc cutter. I sanded those pieces smooth, super glued them each to a cardstock base, and gave them a priming as well. 
I took away two of the funnels to give more space to the paddle wheels. Uh, you know, it's funny, I almost forgot to add these to the ship. I'm very happy I remembered them because they really add a lot of visual and functional flair. I decided to order some aftermarket photo etched railing that model makers use to increase the detail on their battleships. At first I tried 700 scale but realized it was way too small, so I ended up ordering 300 scale that you see here. See, I almost ruined this strip trying to cut it out while on camera. Uh, this stuff is great. You can bend it into whatever shape you want. I was able to contour the shape of the ship and still only bend the rails where the posts were located. This really helped sell the effect. Here's the railing painted and super glued in place. This railing looks amazing, despite my crude methods. With most of the structure finished, it was time to make the siding. I cut some strips of black paper and glued them to the foam core using Elmer's glue. At this point, I thought I might be done with the sides, but spoiler alert, I was not. Next, I painted up some dressmaker straight pins and plugged them into the deck to act as posts for rigging. I then took an art marker and added red trim to mimic the paint job on the Tanty 4. You can also see the khaki thread, flag, and circular piece I added to the top of the turret. I used super glue for these additions. Once I decided that I did indeed need more detail for the side of the ship, I grabbed this collection of art paper. I used Eclipse Black and Reentry Red. I cut very thin strips and used Elmer's glue to attach them. This was a delicate task. Once I finally finished, I used a simple pen to draw the individual planks for added detail. I hit the red planks with that same artist marker so that it would blend a little bit better with those other red sections. I added some final gray acrylic highlights, and it was time to call this sucker finished. These projects always take longer than planned, but they are so worth it in the end. Gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this little underdog. Thank you so much for watching. Up next is the Destroyer. I will be making one of those about three feet long so that it dwarfs this in scale. Then I will follow that up with the shot from A New Hope, that opening crawl of the ships flying past the camera. It's going to be great. I wanted to mention quickly that this channel is going to expand a little bit. I'm probably going to sprinkle in some sizzle reels of action figures or unboxings as well as other random sketches, just to keep the creative juices flowing and add a little bit of variety to this channel. If you're enjoying this content, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that business. Till next time, toodaloo.